Good morning and welcome to our service from Biddeford, Littleham, Langcross, Monkley and Widgeford. My name's Anne Kent and I'm part of the team that helped to plan the service. And we'd like to give a big thank you to all those people who've taken part in any way. We especially want to thank Ben Duig for all the technical support he gives us. Let's begin our service with a psalm, Psalm 100. Shout to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with joy. Come before him with singing. Know that the Lord is God. He made us and we belong to him. We are his people, the sheep he tends. Come into his city with songs of thanksgiving. Into his courtyards with songs of praise. Thank him and praise his name. The Lord is good. His love is forever. And his loyalty goes on and on. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, that right now in our homes, we can praise you and know that you are with us as we meet to worship. Bless this time together and help us to hear you speaking as we worship you. In Jesus' name, Amen. Our first song echoes the psalmist's words, shout to the Lord, let's sing, my Jesus, my Saviour. Forever I love you forever. 
service today. This week we've been adapting to a new norm, allowing greater freedom but with it uncertainty. In the country there's still a lot of COVID-19. What's our response? It's good to meet up with family and friends and welcome them into our home. However, do you like me have a nagging anxiety about what the future might bring? Was it easier when we didn't mix so freely? And now we're faced with many changes which can alarm us and make us fearful as to what the future might have in store. Think of all those people who've opened their businesses after such a long lockdown. For all the tourists who've taken the opportunity to come here and have a break after so many months in one place and in isolation. We need to be honest about our feelings because Psalm 100 says, the Lord is good, his love is forever. Let's join together as we confess how we feel. Lord God, you have made a wonderful and beautiful world. We thank you that here in North Devon, we can all enjoy your world at this difficult time. As more people come to holiday in the West Country, and businesses and attractions open, we confess to you our fear of what these changes will bring. Sometimes we are less than welcoming to others. For the times we have let fear rule us, forgive us, Lord. For the times we have begrudged others, enjoying the beauty of this area, forgive us, Lord. We know that at times we take our world for granted, for the pollution and damage to our environment. Forgive us, Lord. For the times we have not seen the need in others and turned away. Forgive us, Lord. For all those times we have not been people of generosity, we have been unwilling to share we have not been your people. Forgive us, Lord. May the God of love bring us back to himself. Forgive us our sins and assure us of his eternal love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. For his fame and renown 
Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, Jesus, Savior of the world. We will spread the word of His soon return to reclaim the world for His glory. Church now sing of this coming King, crowned with majesty, our Redeemer, and He reigns, ruler of the heavens, and His name is Jesus the Messiah, for He made us a way by which we have been saved. The Savior of the world. So we lift up a shout for His fame and renown. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, Jesus, Savior of the world. gives me great pleasure to introduce and welcome Chris and Rachel Hutchins and their baby Tabitha as Chris has come to start as a lay worker with us until September the 12th when he will be licensed deacon in Exeter Cathedral and a start as our curate here so welcome Hi everyone, my name's Chris. I'm Rachel, this is Tabby. And this is Monty. And um, we're really pleased to be here and we're looking forward very much to meeting you all soon. Hi everyone. So I thought we'd have a little journey whilst you hear about my journey. Um, so I grew up in a Christian family um, and uh, grew up in Slough and then moved to Stoke Poges. Um, I worked in various jobs after leaving college and basically started in the film business in 1999 which um, was an absolute an incredible experience um, lots of highs lots of lows but uh, I learned a lot and met some amazing people made some amazing friends and yeah, really learnt a lot doing that. Um, I was basically in the film business for 19 years, but in 2010 I was at a party with a friend of mine and we got talking and she was exploring um, military chaplaincy. And so we were chatting about that and she invited me on an insight day, which I went on with her and we went to see a regiment and a chaplain and had a fantastic day. It was really interesting. And whilst I was there, um, that's where I felt God say to me that maybe this is something that I needed to explore. Um, and that was the start of my ordination exploration journey, really, in 2010. But he, he, but he said to me, you know, this isn't, this isn't going to start just yet. So I just kept working at it i kept working in the film business doing various jobs and then i just sort of 
carried on knocking on that particular door to see when when it would open and really the the door started to open in 2016 and then I started training uh, at St Melitis in 2018 which has been an absolute privilege and a pleasure met some amazing people again um, formed some really deep friendships and relationships and uh, and I and I believe that they will carry on for I hope for the rest of our lives and um, towards the end of last year was when I started exploring whereabouts my curacy was going to be and um, and God has brought us to Biddeford and to St Mary's um, we're so pleased to be here it feels such a, such a privilege and um, we've been made to feel incredibly welcome by everybody it's lovely and I'm really looking forward to serving my curacy here serving the community of St Mary's and Really, really looking forward to, to meeting you all soon. So thanks very much. Bye bye. There was once a man who had two sons. Hello, I'm a father. I have two sons. Hello, I'm the eldest son and I work for my father. Hello, I'm the youngest son and I'm fed up of working for my father. I want to have some fun. Father, when you die, I know all your money will be shared between us brothers. Could I have mine now, please? Oh, what? Really? Oh, all right. So he divided his wealth and gave half to his younger son. Whoopee! Right, I'm off. Hey dudes, where's the party? Anyone join me in a drink? Cheers! Way hey hey! This is more like it. The son spent every penny on wild living, but then trouble came. The country where he lived had a famine and even basic food ran out. Before long, the party boy was starving, so he got a job. OK, I need money, but looking after pigs? Really? Actually, that food they're eating looks pretty good. I might just eat some of that. What am I doing? I'm so hungry. I want to eat pigs, Will. Finally, he came to his senses. My father's workers have plenty to eat. And here I am, starving to death. I will go to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against God in heaven and against you. I am no longer good enough to be called your son. Treat me like one of your workers. The younger son got up and started back to his father. But when he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt sorry for him. Look who it is. I've spent these long months waiting and longing and finally he's coming back. My dear son. Oh, he looks dreadful. So thin and weak. He ran as fast as he could to meet his son and hugged and kissed him. My son, my precious son, you're home. Let me hold you. Hang on a minute, Dad. Wait, look. I sinned against God in heaven and against you. I'm no longer good enough to be called your son. Oh, you've always been, you always are, you always will be my son. You servants, get a robe to replace these rags. Get a ring to prove he's my son. Put sandals on his poor cut feet. Prepare the best calf along with a banquet. For we must celebrate. My beloved son was dead, but he's alive again. He's been lost, but now he's found. So the celebrations began, but out in the barn, as the sounds of music and dancing reached his ears, the eldest son was not really in the party mood. A servant had told him his younger brother was back, and he was so angry, he wouldn't even go into the house. His father went out to him. My son, what are you doing out here? Come in, celebrate. Please don't stay outside. For years I have worked for you like a slave and I have always obeyed you, but you have never given me even a single goat so I could give a dinner for my friends. This other son of yours wasted me on prostitutes and now that he has come home you order this, the best calf to be killed for a feast. This made the father very sad. Oh my son, you are always with me and everything I have is yours, but we should be glad and celebrate. Your brother was dead, but now he's alive. He was lost, and now he's been found.
it's indeed great to welcome Chris and Rachel, Tabby, Monty, uh, the dog, and Minstrel the cat to live and work amongst us. Welcome is something we sing at the start of Music Makers and we hope Tabby will get to learn it. Welcome means to be wanted, appreciated, gladly received. And we definitely feel and think all those things in saying hello and welcome to Chris, Rachel and Tabby. However, people are not always welcome. I was out walking the other day with some friends in Appledore and two people passed by and we were commiserating about the grey sky and the rain rather like today. Well, one said, at least it'll keep the grockles away. They won't come out in this weather. I asked my friend, what's a grockle? Thinking it might be like a little crab or something that lives under the pebbles. Oh no, a grockle is a person not from these parts, said my friend. Oh, I thought that doesn't sound very friendly. But of course, holiday makers are welcome. Summer in Biddeford is normally buzzing with excited families on holiday. And these families come and enjoy for a week or a fortnight what we are so fortunate to enjoy all the year round. They come and they boost our economy and bring employment to countless people in this area. But this year, of course, is different. There's an anxiety around that North Devon, up to now so fortunate, may suddenly be exposed to COVID-19 virus as people not from these parts come and make their home among us. In the story that we just heard, Jesus tells the story of the prodigal son and our sympathies may understandably lie with the older brother. He has been trustworthy, reliable, worked hard, done all the right things. He was happy when it was only him and his dad. But now this incomer, even if he is a brother, represents a threat to the norm. And what's more, he seems to be welcomed with total irresponsible generosity of heart. No holds, holds barred. The older brother judges his younger sibling. He resents him and he thinks his dad is foolish and stands. And so the older brother stands aloof. As we see in this painting by Rembrandt. But our sympathies may also rest with the younger brother. And this is a painting of, um, it's, it's a self-portrait of Rembrandt when he was in his younger days and you can see he's having a good time. The younger brother is just excited about life. Great, we can go out to the pubs. Life is for living. But this younger brother is immature and there is a great error of judgment. He spends his father's inheritance and in his day that was like wishing his father dead. It was an unforgivable thing to do. Of course life is for living, but his living leads him, the younger brother, to move further and further away from the one who truly loves him. And before long, he is an alienated from his family, from himself. He's like a foreigner in an alien land and he ends up at rock bottom until, as it says in, in the Bible, he comes to his senses. 
Now, Chris and I are going to do a lot of theological reflection this year. Well, Chris, I just sit in, really. Um, but in a way, that's uh, a bit like coming to our senses when we think of our situation not on our own, but we actually think of our situation with God. And that's what we do in, in prayer and as we reflect on things in our lives when we feel, uh-uh, I'm not feeling very peaceful here, I'm not feeling very joyful, now why is that? And we do that with God. It's um, coming to our senses, but in a safe place with God. Well, anyway, this younger brother comes to his senses, but he's far away from God. But from that moment, he turns around and he moves closer and closer to his father. The generosity of the father is in total contrast. The younger son in exile imagines his father's response. He will reprimand him, won't he, and punish him. But instead he finds his father has been out every day looking for him. Every day wanting him, yearning for him to come home. And he does something an old man should not do in, his, in this culture. He runs towards his son when he sees him on the horizon coming towards him with his arms out wide. He embraces him. And he gives him the fatted calf and throws the most joyful of parties. Of course, Jesus is making a point here this is total, unconditional love and acceptance. You are wanted. You are appreciated. You are gladly received. You are welcome. That is God's relationship with us. Whatever we do, however we, far we wander from him, and whoever we are, and from what from wherever we come. I would love to move this story on a bit. How did things pan out? Did the older brother ever find joy in letting go of his resentment? Did he ever forgive his younger brother? Did the younger brother find peace in hearing how much he is loved? Did the two, as they grow older, begin to take on the characteristics of their father, loving from that place of having been loved totally without condition. The answer to this parable lies obviously in that movement towards respect, respect for each other, and translated into our local situation and context, this involves giving a warm welcome to people on holiday, receiving them generously without being governed by fear, which is so easy to do at the moment. Enjoy Devon, this wonderful place. This is your break. This is your holiday. You deserve it. Come and have a rest. You are welcome. But also, please respect us. Respect us by keeping your social distance. But come close to us. Be part of us. Let us learn from each other what it is to be community. Allowing God, the Father's heart of welcome, to occupy our own.
grace to forgive. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you have blessed us with in our lives. Thank you for our families, our friends, our homes and all the great things we have around us. Thank you for sending Jesus to die for us so that we can live as forgiven people and can have a relationship with you. We lift up to you our world. We pray especially for those who are suffering from the consequences of COVID-19 and particularly in countries where it is escalating. We pray for your healing and protection of everyone in those places and their loved ones. We also pray for everyone in the world who is struggling with their circumstances, whatever they are. Lord, please hear their prayers and let them know your nearness, your comfort and your love for them. Mm. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you are doing in the life of our church. We are so grateful for the freedom we have here in the UK of being able to worship you freely and in community. We ask that you would help and guide all of us at St Mary's as we move forward and adjust to life after lockdown. We pray for patience and grace and for us to be a welcoming people with wisdom and kindness. And when we open our church doors again, we pray for a happy and safe church reopening. We lift up to you, James and Zoe, getting married here at the end of this month. We thank you for them and for their love for one another. And we pray for your blessing and protection over them and their friends and families in the run up to their very special day. And as we continue to investigate how we might be able to increase the effectiveness of our church building. We pray that you would guide us and lead us in the direction you would have us go with the plans that are being created. We ask Lord that your spirit would fill all those taking part in and leading the new life course and that it would be an amazing eye-opening experience for all those who are attending. We pray for our mission community. We thank you for the relationships that we have with one another and we prayed for continuing, continued deepening and strengthening of those relationships. We ask for your hand to be on all those who worship in our five churches, mm. that you would help us grow in our faith and spread the good news about Jesus to our friends and neighbours. In these worrying times, we pray that you would give us all a spirit of welcome, love and grace for people coming to Biddeford and the surrounding areas for their holidays. Help us to not be fearful of holiday makers, but to be loving and grace filled. Heavenly Father, we bring before you all those we know who are ill. We pray that you would bring healing to their bodies and that they would know your love and your joy. We also lift up to you all those who have lost loved ones recently. Please be near to them, comfort them and give them your peace. Mm. And finally, as we come to the beginning of a new week, we ask that you would guide and lead us in all that you have planned for us to do. Walk ahead of us and show us the way. We ask all of these things in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. And let's close with the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, 
on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. From the highest of heights to the depths of the sea Creations revealing your majesty From the colors of fall to the fragrance of spring Every creature unique in the song that it sings All exclaiming, indescribable, uncontainable You place the stars in the sky and you Nimble where it should go Or seen heavenly storehouses laden with snow Who imagine the sun and give souls to its light Yet conceals it to bring us the coolness of night None can fathom Indescribable, uncontainable You place the stars in the sky And you know them by name You are amazing God All powerful, untamable All struck we fall to our knees As we humbly proclaim You are amazing God Uncontainable You place the stars in the sky And you know them by name You are amazing God Incomparable Unchangeable You see the depths of my heart And you love me the same You are amazing God The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>